Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 7 of the Endless Runner mini-series. In this episode, we are continuing where we left off in the last episode and finish the spawning of our floor tiles so that they can spawn infinitely and destroy themselves after they have been passed by from our run character. For this, we will implement the onOverlap begin function of our trigger box in the floor tile to tell the game mode to spawn a new tile and to destroy itself after two seconds. And this is where I will introduce how to use timers in C++, which are the equivalent to using delays in blueprints. So let's get right into it. But first, let's figure out what we need to do in the floor tile to be able to call the game mode to tell it to spawn another tile. We need a reference to the game mode itself to call the add floor tile function there. And then we need a way to find out when our character runs through the trigger box and then executes our call to the game mode and trigger the destruction of the tile. So let's start implementing that. So now let's go into our code from the floor tile and in the protected section we are going to add a new property which is visible instance only and forward declare it as a endless runner game mode base pointer and let's say run game mode. So now the question is how do we get the game mode? Let's go into our CPP file and in our begin play get the game mode. For this we use the U gameplay statics class which has a lot of static functions that we can use to get a lot of stuff like the player controller, game mode, and many more things. So let's just do this. So for example, you can say you gameplay statics and there you have get game mode and we need the world for that. So but this returns the basic game mode base but not our class so we need to cast it and cast we do like this cast a endless runner game mode base and put them in parentheses and do it like this so now we got our game mode we cast it to our specific class but we need to check it and there is like one function in C++ called check, which automatically, if the check fails, it crashes or the crashes the, the editor or the game or quits it so that you can see there's something wrong here and can see what really happened. So this is check for development purposes so that you can really see that things might have not turned out as you hope to be and where stuff that is really necessary can be checked like the, the game mode here there should be no way that this fails if this fails something is wrong so we check it and then we never need to check for null pointer when we access it in here so now we have our game mode and we check if it's valid okay now that we have this it's time for setting up our trigger box or binding a function to the overlap event. The way you do this is we have our floor trigger box and he has a on component begin overlap event that we can bind methods to. But the methods that we bind need a specific signature like specific parameters and stuff. So if we go into here, we can see it's an F component begin overlap signature. And if we look at it, we can see it's a multicast delegate that is used. We are using something different or similar later on when we have our coins and life count and stuff. That's where I introduced you to multicast events. But usually you can see that this is the signature that they want for this. So we basically have start from kind of like in here where we have the 
after the name, this is the signature that we kind of like need to get. So when you don't know the signatures of events, just go in there in, in the class where it's defined and you can see those signatures here. We just copy this. Let's go to the floor tile H and under protected, it must be a U function to be able, to sim similar to what we did with the input handling when we added or bind the function to, to the inputs, they need to be U functions. And the same goes for here. So we call it void on trigger box overlap, for example, and put this in here. So now we still have errors because we need to remove every second one. When, when we cover events, I will explain more how this works that in those macros, each single parameter, the name and the type is separated by commas. So we need to get rid of those commas to work and add the semicolon. Okay, so now we have declared it. Let's create the implementation for it and remove this, make it, un put it under the tick. So now we have our floor trigger box, the on component begin overlap. And now we need to add our function that so as soon as the trigger or the component is overlapped, it's triggered, then it needs to call our function. And the way we do it, similar to our input handling, we add a dynamic function or add dynamic and call it this. So we want to specify a function from this object. Let's copy this, a reference, colon, colon, this function. And now we defined our function or added it to this multicast event so that as soon as the collision is triggered, it will call our function. So let's go in and implement it. So what do we need to do? We need to check, is it our character that collides with this trigger? And then we need to call the game mode to add the floor tile and then trigger the destruction after two seconds. So let's check first if it's our run character and we see that we got the actor that it's collided with and we need to check this, is it the character? And the way we do this is casting. So we specify our run character and cast the other actor to our run character. If it's not the character that's colliding with it, then it would be a null pointer. So we need to check it if run character, if it's really our run character, and then we know it's our character and then we can say, run game mode, add floor tile. So this is how basically we will do this. And now we need to trigger the destruction of this tile itself. And for that, we need a timer and another function that we specified that is called after two seconds. So let's go into our header file. Okay, so in our header file from the floor tile, let's create another U function. Again, for binding or for using timers, these functions need to be U functions that we call. So we will call this void destroy floor tile. Generate the implementation. Go back in here. And then we need a U property and it's a timer, F timer handle. And we call it destroy handle. F for using timers, we need so-called timer handles that are passed in to a function call from timer manager. And that's why we need to define one. Let's go into our trigger box and let's call this timer manager that we can then call this function after two seconds. So the timer manager can be found or can be accessed through the world. And it's in a special case because we are having an actor, the actor has a function called get world timer manager. 
so we can access it directly or what we can usually do is call get world get timer manager and then we can use it so it's the same thing just for your information let's just use the get world timer manager and call set timer and for that we need our handle as the first parameter then usually like it is with every kind of function binding we need to specify which object so it's this and then the function pointer the function the reference to the function and then after this now it's time to define the rate that means how many seconds so we say 2.f it's two seconds after two seconds this function will be called and then as last parameter we call false which means this is not looping so this is only called once usually what you can do is and, and see sometimes in blueprints that you can also create like a event that is called in in a loop that's every tick and you can do something like this with timers that you can say this function is called every two seconds and loops and loops and loops so you can set up stuff like this but in this case we just call it once and that's basically it so we get the world timer manager we set the timer specify our function and the seconds to call and in this function now what we need to do with timers and handles it's a good practice to clear the timer so what you usually do is you look in your handle and see if it's still valid and if the handle is still valid then we get our world timer manager and call the function clear timer and pass the destroy handle our timer handle and this clears the timer so it, this is a good practice when you're using timers and handles that you define use the handle and after you defined it or used it you clear the, the, the handle and then what we need to do is say this dot destroy and this destroys our actor later on in the next episodes we will add more to this stuff but for now this is how our function now looks like on our trigger we call the add floor tile from the run game mode in our game mode we add the floor tile because the game mode has the next spawn point where the tiles will be it handles the spawning of floor tiles then we set our timer to destroy our tile after two seconds so this is basically how you do timers how you do overlap events so for many of these similar functions when you have events that you need to add functions for you need to figure out the signature of that event that you can create a function with that signature like we did here and then and you can add it as dynamic and this is basically it so let's compile it and see if it works so it compiled successfully let's head over to our editor and see if our floor tile is spawned infinitely. Let's hit play and you can see it seems like it's adding new floor tiles. Let's hit F8 to see what happens and you can see automatically kind of like destroys the tiles and new ones added. So this is it. It works so we now can create our infinite tiles one aspect that I wanted to show you again, or that you can get an understanding more clearly of collision, what we did in the floor tile was to set the collision profile name to overlap only as you remember. And so that only pawns can, or the collision only with pawns will trigger that event. And the way you can see it also here is in our floor tile. Let's select the trigger box and you can see in the collision part that overlap only pawn is selected. And if we go into the presets, we can see that overlap only pawn and vehicle. Okay, we don't have a vehicle, but this is kind of like the collision that we specified. I forgot this the last time, so I wanted to make sure to for you to see that once we selected that preset, it now works with only the pawn and our run character is a pawn. So, okay, this is it. 
Now, in the last episodes, we saw how to create our floor tiles, specify all the components. We learned about timers, we learned about overlap events, and are now able to infinitely create our floor tiles. In the next episode, I want to really go into lane switching so that the character that can run that runs can switch between the left, center, and right lanes. So this is what we are going to tackle in the next episode. So thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that video. And please leave a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit the bell to get notified for new episodes. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I gladly answer them. Okay then, see you in the next video.